Hello everyone, my name is Sasha Hein and I have recently published this paper here in the Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry called Illuminate Metamerism between Natural Teeth and Zirconia Restorations Evaluated with a Chromatic Adaptation Transform. And I'm here today to tell you what does it mean. So I'm currently a postgraduate researcher at Leeds University in the School of Design and my supervisor is Professor Stephen Westland. When you do a PhD in the United Kingdom you're expected to provide a transfer report towards the end of your first year. And this is comprised of your first research project, which you have to present and defend in front of a panel. If you pass your transfer viva, then you're allowed to continue with your research and you're being transferred from provisional PhD student to permanent PhD student. The paper that I've published in JPD is only a small extract from this transfer report. So let's dive right in. Illuminum metamerism, what does it mean? Illuminate metamerism means that two objects can have the same color under one light source, but not under another light source. So I'm sure that most of you are familiar with the term color temperature. And color temperature is a parameter that describes the color of a visible light source. And different light sources have different color temperatures. And when you shine these different color temperatures onto objects, then they will change their color as well. And this is called color and constancy. However, the human eye has the ability to always recognize a white sheet of paper regardless of the color temperature under which it is viewed. So the human visual system has the ability to discount the spectral characteristics of the light source and retain this sensation of whiteness and this is called chromatic adaptation. And here I've transferred this to the dental context where we're looking at a beautiful natural anterior scene viewed under D65. And when you switch from this light source to another light source with a different color temperature, you can immediately notice a difference in the white balance in the image as well, but the sensation of a natural bright tooth color is still maintained. And this is caused by chromatic adaptation by the human visual system. And when you compare those two conditions, you can see that there actually is a quite strong color difference between them both, and this is what we call color inconstancy. Now, illuminate metamerism is something that has plagued dentistry for a very long time, and here's a quite nice example that shows it. So these are two scenes from the movie The Joker. And in this movie, in one of the earlier scenes, the Joker sits in front of a makeup mirror that is lit by incandescent lighting. And you can observe that there's almost no noticeable color difference between the two maxillary centrals. In a later part of the movie, the Joker is being interrogated in an interrogation cell which presumably has fluorescent tubing mounted to the ceiling. And under this type of color temperature, you can very easily see that the Joker has a crown on tooth 2-1, which is now a lot brighter than the adjacent tooth. So metamerism is something that you can observe in clinical reality quite often. It's not unusual that a crown can match to the adjacent natural teeth quite nicely under one viewing condition, but not when this is changed, as you can see in these two images here, which have been provided to me by Javier Tapia from Madrid. So early authors and pioneers in the field of aesthetic dentistry have recognized the importance of metamerism. So this is Robert C. Sproul here, for instance, who in 1973 wrote that metamerism is a monster and that it has the ability um, to destroy a perfectly good color match when the light situations are changed, when the color temperature of the light source is changed. John McLean argued that the reason for this must be the different chemical composition that we have between natural teeth and indirect restorations. And the late Makoto Yamamoto was of the same opinion. And he argued that you always have illuminate metamerism between artificial restorations and natural teeth for this reason, the difference in chemical composition. So here's a, a really good example of metamerism, and this is provided by um, this light indicator strip here, which comes from a Swiss company called Ugra. And when you view it under D50 lighting, so a color temperature with 5000 Kelvin, then this green looks like a uniform color strip almost. But when you switch to a different color temperature, in this, in this case TL84, you can notice a very visible shift in the color and and the colors no longer match, and the two greens look very, very different. So how does this work? You know, how does this, how does this happen? Well, here we're looking at the spectral reflectance factors of both of these types of greens that we have in the Ugra light indicator strip. And those, there's a purple line and there's a green line there. So for metamerism to take place, one requirement is that these two spectral reflectance factors 
cross over at least three times. And these crossover points must be located within the areas of the visible spectrum that the cones are most sensitive to. So we've got three types of cones that allow for color vision, one for the short, the medium, and the long wave spectrum of the part of the visible spectrum. And if you want to have a, an appreciably strong degree of metamerism, then the convergence between those crossover points must be quite strong as well. So that when you view this uh, color strip under D50 illumination, it looks almost like a uniform green. It's hard to distinguish. And then when you switch to a different color temperature, say fluorescent tubing, TL84 or something like that, you can obviously see you know, a quite strong color difference. And this is a classic example of metamerism. Now, the question is, does it matter in dentistry? And this is what we wanted to find out. So the first thing that we did is we looked into the different types of materials that are used for indirect restorations, and we focused on the ones that are used mostly nowadays. And this is a quite good survey that was carried out by um, Nate Lawson, I believe he's in Alabama University, Birmingham University, sorry, um, where they send out this uh, questionnaire with help of the American Dental Association, and it clearly shows the dominant use of zirconium dioxide as a restorative material nowadays. And so the respondents said that 45% of them use only monolithic restorations for everything, 42% of them said that they use layered zirconium restorations only in the anterior, and 10% use them um, for the anterior and for the posterior. Very interestingly, one of the things that was also reported in this survey was that most participants uh, reported that the greatest disadvantage of zirconia was related to shape mismatching. So that was another reason why we decided to focus our investigation on the metameric potential between uh, human extracted teeth and zirconia restorations, layered zirconia restorations and monolithic zirconia restorations. This was the uh, measurement setup that, that we used. This is a radio spectrometer. And this particular illumination geometry is provided by um, a diffuse hemisphere. This setup was originally proposed in 1999 by Molinite Al. I have used this for many years in, in many of my experiments and studies, and I'm quite familiar with it. And for the, um, for the acquisition or the measurement of the spectral reflectance factors, we used a, um, a radius spectrometer, a PR670 in this case, which is quite often used in, in dental research. So the first thing that we did is we gathered a bunch of um, hand-layered polychromatic crowns uh, that I had made over the years, and we measured the spectral reflectance factors of these hand-layered zirconia restorations. And then we had uh, single anterior crowns milled from the materials of different manufacturers. So we included IPS uh, Emacs Circuit Prime, Emman Gibber Solid FX Multilayer, Noritaki Katana STML, the Circonsan Preto 2 dispersive at the time, and Serona Densply Circon XTML. And we milled maxillary single anterior crowns out of these materials in the shades A1 to A4. And then we measured the spectral reflectance factors, which you can see here. If you want to evaluate metamerism, you really have to find pairs of a natural tooth, an extracted maxillary central, and a maxillary central crown that present with a small color match, and these are called parameric pairs. So we use the MATLAB routine to identify parameric pairs of crowns and natural teeth that matched reasonably well. And from the initial 114 extracted human teeth that we had, the 30 layered crowns and 75 CATCAM milled monolithic crowns, the routine identified 10 pairs of extracted human teeth and um, hand-layered restorations that presented with a pretty small color difference. On average, it was 1.5. And the cutoff threshold that we chose was 1.8, which is the threshold for clinical acceptability. So these were the 10 pairs of layered zirconia restorations and a closely matching maxillary central tooth, an extracted natural tooth. And these were the 28 pairs consisting of extracted teeth and their closest matching milled monolithic restoration that we included in our study. And then, and then what we did is we measured the color difference between these pairs of samples under the reference condition, which is Illumina D65. And then we measured the color difference again under different test conditions. 
And so the different illuminants that we used were illuminant A, F2, F7, F11, and then the new LED illuminants that the CIE has recently come up with. And these data were computed, and I will explain this in a minute. So it's very tempting when you want to compute this to analyze, it's very tempting to just take the spectral reflectance factor of the extracted teeth and the zirconia restorations and then simply convert it to XYZ values uh, under the test conditions, say one of the you know, test illuminants, say F2 for instance, convert these to C-lab values and then work out what the color difference is between the tooth and the crown using the CD2000 color difference equation. And in fact, this is the approach that most dental re researchers have chosen that have tried to evaluate the potential of illuminate metamerism for dental materials. But there's a problem with this approach, and that is the CD2000 color difference equation is meant to work under very, very precisely defined conditions. And one of these conditions is that they're meant to be used for D65 illuminants only. So when you're trying to work out the color difference between a crown and a natural tooth under a different type of illumination, a test illuminant like F2, for instance, then this is called asymmetric color matching, and the CD2000 color difference equation is not recommended for this purpose. So as tempting as this approach is, it probably shouldn't be used. Because as I've explained earlier, the human eye has the ability to recognize a white sheet of paper to retain this sensation regardless of the spectral um, composition of the light source, and this is called chromatic adaptation. And so to predict the corresponding colors you know, of an object when measured under one light source and another light source, um, we use a chromatic adaptation transform for this purpose. And this is the approach that we used in this research. So what we did is we took the spectral reflectance factors of the extracted tooth and the closely matching partner, which was a layered zirconia crown or a milled zirconia crown. We converted these to XYZ values for every of the nine test illuminants that we chose. Then we used a chromatic adaptation transform called CAT16 to predict its corresponding color under D65, which is the reference illuminant. And then from there, we converted these stimuli to C-lab values, and then we used the CD2000 color difference equation to work out the color difference. So it's like you do this in reverse. That's basically how it works. Okay, so what were the results? So in, in these two bar graphs here, we can see on the left-hand side the metamerism, metamerism index for the layered zirconia restorations. And if you can see that on average, the color difference that were caused by switching from one illuminant to another illuminant was less than the perceptibility threshold of a delta E of 0 0.8. So, you know, you'd never recognize this. And in the case of the monolithic crowns, the picture is very similar. The switch from one illuminant to another illuminant only really caused very small color differences. The ones that stand out here slightly, although it's still below the chosen threshold of 1.8 for clinical acceptability, was for illuminant F11. However, I have to say that these illuminants, the F-type illuminants of F11, F2, and F7, have been banished by the European Union since last month, since the 26th of August, because fluorescent tubing contains mercury, and this is an environmental hazard, and therefore they have been discontinued. So nowadays, and in future, all the illuminants that we deal with in every life are pretty much LED illuminants. So you can forget about the F11 and, and, um, and the other F illuminants. They are pretty much discontinued now. This is quite interesting here. This is the frequency distribution of the metamerism, metamerism index, and it shows quite nicely that the layered zirconia restorations, on average, had smaller incidence of um, metamerism and that the monolithic restorations, on average, were more um, metameric, but not to the point where it would really matter. It's just an interesting little fact. Another bit of trivia for you is that when we looked at the spectral reflectance factors of these monolithic milled zirconia restoration, we noticed that there were these, um, these divots, these, these, um, these peaks here in the, in the reflectance values of these materials, and they were quite distinct, and all of these manufacturers seemed to have them with very few exceptions. So we had these dips in the spectrum at around 520 nanometers, and again at around 655 nanometers. And when we compared this with other materials like the uh, Katana STML from Noritake, for instance, they had very smooth curves, and so did the layered zirconia crowns. So these, these, um, these dips were in present. So we were intrigued by this, and we wanted to know where they came from, what the origin is. 
And it turned out that um, most of the manufacturers get their raw materials from a Japanese company called Tosho. And they provide these colorants as well that manufacturers use for making all the Vita colors and enamel colors that we work with in, in dentistry and dental technology. And they really only have about four colorants available to them. They have one that is yellow, they have one that's red, one that's gray, and one that's white. And the red one, the red coloration, is caused by erbium ions. And those erbium ions have those sharp absorption peaks in these areas that we have observed in the restoration. So the dips in the spectrum are caused by erbium ions, which was quite interesting to find out. So what does all of this mean in the end of the day? Well, what it means is pretty much this. When you have a crown, no matter if it's a monolithic crown, like a multi-layer monolithic crown, or if it's an indirect hand-layered restoration, and if they match to their natural adjacent tooth under any light condition, then that match is going to hold up under other light conditions as well. So we couldn't really find any satisfactory evidence for the existence of illuminate metamerism between zirconia restorations and those extracted teeth. And the reason for that is because the, the, when, when a tooth and a crown match, they do so because of their spectral similarity and not because the spectral distributions are dissimilar. But despite all of that, I still believe that metamerism exists and it can be observed quite often in nature. But whatever the reasons for this type of metameric failure are, it is not illuminate metamerism, so it must be something else, and we should keep looking for the reasons for that. So again, this is the paper that I've published, and uh, you can find a, a link where you can download this paper in the open access format. Thank you very much.